What is T2LT? No, it's not a call sign. It's an antenna. It's a vertical antenna that doesn't need radials. It's a DX antenna. It's a very simple antenna to make. Perhaps we better explore it. So let's together explore the T2LT antenna. Well, the T2LT antenna goes back a long way. Apparently, the title or the, the name of the antenna um, stems from a patent that was filed a long time ago by a German guy. But I think the patent actually was about the choke rather than the antenna. Anyway, we will stick with T2LT because that's what it's popularly known as. And it's a single band antenna. And it's actually derived from a sleeved, coax sleeved antenna. Now this antenna is single band, so you're not going to be able to multi-band it at all. But the good thing about it is, it can be remarkably cheap. All you need is a length of coax and a bit of flex from your local ironmongers. Well, if it's cheap and if it works, <laughs> it might well be worth considering. So let's take a, a closer look at the T2LT. Right, well, I'll, I'll draw it here. Basically, you've got a quarter wavelength of flex and you've got a length of coax cable that feeds it. Well, quite clearly, that is pretty crude and it's not likely to work in that particular form. I decided to experiment and uh, make one for the 10 meter band because I had a, a reason for wanting a, a quick uh, and easy antenna for 10 meters. So I measured the top section here at 2.5 meters. Now the clever thing about the T2LT is that you insert a choke a quarter wave down here, a quarter wave below the feed point because the feed point is where the flex, the quarter wave flex attaches to the coax and that's just attached to the centre conductor of the coax. So we put a choke in at the bottom. Now we know that RF flows both on the inside and the outside of the coax sheath in and the bit that flows on the outside is often called the common mode current and it's very often a problem because it travels down the coax and cause all sorts of problems in the shack unless you put a line isolator. Well what we're going to do here or what we have done here is we've added a line isolator and we make use of this current flowing down the outside of the coax but we choke it off at a quarter wave and if you look at the antenna now you'll see that it's actually a halfway vertical dipole. That's clever isn't it? A halfway vertical dipole and all we've done is added a choke now, a lot of designs use the um, method of winding an inductor, about 10 or 12 turns of, of the coax around uh, something of something like a two and a half, three inch diameter um, pipe, will actually do the trick, it acts as a choke. And, and it works quite well, but the problem with that is that it's not that easy to adjust it. If you use a ferrite core, as I've used, then you can very easily adjust the position of that core up and down because you will need to do a few adjustments on this antenna and I will talk about these adjustments in a second but you can see how easy it is to move that ferrite core up and down a bit to finely tune the antenna. So let's see what's actually involved in setting it up. Well the first thing to note is that when you insert anything at the end of a dipole, it causes it to change frequency slightly. Eff effectively, it loads it. Um, we know this from uh, uh, the n-fed half wave. We, we calculate the length of an n-fed half wave and we frequently find that we need to make it a bit shorter to get the VSWR down. And that's because when you attach anything to the end of a half wave dipole, it changes its frequency. and the part of a dipole that is most sensitive is that the ends. It's very, very sensitive at the ends. And if you ever play around with, say, a quarter wave 
a loaded uh, whip on the car and put your hand near the top of the antenna, you'll find that you can actually hear the signals go, you know, sort of go away or die down. Now, <laughs> the dimensions I ended up with weren't quite the dimensions I expected, which really underlines the fact that if you're dealing with anth antenna theory, if at all possible, it's advisable to try and check them out in practice. Now, I know this is not always possible, but uh, this is an example where the theory doesn't quite match up with the practice. Let me show you the dimensions that I ended up for the 10 meter version. Now, if I draw the basic antenna here, we've got the top, which is the resonant term um, or the quarter wave um, vertical part. And then we've got the bottom, which is the lower part of the antenna, which actually is the other half of the dipole. We've got a vertical dipole. Now the bottom section, I ended up at 2.5 meters long, but the top section, I ended up as 2.25 meters long somewhat shorter than I anticipated and the overall length of the antenna is slightly shorter than I anticipated. Now the reason I think is apart from the loading effect of the choke, by adjusting the length of one side of the antenna you also adjust in the feed impedance and I suspect that the feed impedance was a bit low and by moving the uh, feed impedance which is effectively achieved by just in one side of the antenna and not the other, um, you, you can raise or lower the impedance. And I think in this particular case, um, by moving the actual center of the, effect, the antenna effectively to one side, I've raised the uh, impedance slightly or, uh, and therefore it gives a better match to 50 ohm coax. That's what I suspect. I haven't measured it, but it's not quite easy to measure on this particular antenna, but that's what I suspect happened. So anyway, they are the dimensions I ended up with. And that is why I highlight this, because if you're making another version of this antenna for a different band, you may also find that you have dimensions which are not quite what you expected. Now this antenna was originally conceived to be used as a vertical. And that's the popular way that it is used. But there's no reason why it has to be used as a vertical. But first of all, before we talk about uh, different um, configurations it's also been recommended that the antenna should be at least a couple of meters or so or percentage of wavelength eighth wavelength i think above ground now i i don't really understand that and i can't actually figure that one out because if it is raised above the ground by an eighth of a wavelength well that's fine it's going to work a bit better because it's seeing more sky in your domestic garden but I don't think that's an essential part of the operation. I think that may have crept in um, simply by because somebody once said it and it's always been that sort of myth has been perpetuated. After all, it's not very different from an end-fed uh, half-wave, uh, the, the traditional 49 to 1 end-fed half-wave. We know that those can be used as verticals and we know that that matching transformer can be used very near the ground. So I see no reason why the uh, T2LT can't be used fairly close to the ground. Now, if you've got a matching uh, choke there, particularly if it's uh, an air wound one, it's probably sensible to have it a little bit above the ground because it will be affected by the proximity. But it doesn't need to be an eighth of a wavelength above the ground. I would say probably about a half a metre above the ground is more than adequate, and uh, I'd have no hesitation in using it in that way. But let me show you other ways it can be used. I've used it as a sloper, like this. You just go down from a window in a hotel, or in my, in my case, the house, and uh, down towards the ground, and it seems to work quite well like that. You could have, of course, used it as a horizontal antenna like this. Just run it out as a horizontal antenna from wherever you're operating. And uh, you could actually modify the vertical uh, format of it so that you've only got the quarter wave as a vertical and the other half the other quarter wave coming out as a horizontal that uh, seems to work quite well so there are other configurations it doesn't have to be a vertical antenna if in your particular location you want to try something else and it's always worth trying something else with antennas so to sum up 
what do I think of the T2LT? Well, it does what it's claimed to do. It's a monoband vertical antenna, but it doesn't have to be used as a vertical antenna, and it doesn't have to be an eighth wave or whatever it is above ground. It can be fairly close to the ground, but it can be used as a horizontal antenna or as a sloper or as a modified vertical. Its downside is that it's only single band. You can't make it multi-band. The upside is that it's very cheap to make. A bit of coax and uh, a bit of flex and uh, either a ferrite core, as I've used, or a bit of plastic to wind uh, some turns around a, a uh, former, and you've got an effective monoband antenna. And it's efficient. It's very efficient. The only losses are in the coax cable, which is going to be minimal anyway. Although on 10 meters, of course, it does start to stack up a little bit. But even with a modest run of uh, RG58, say uh, uh, 10 meters of RG58, you're not going to lose more than around about a dB, which is neither here nor there. So it's good antenna. But I suppose one has to say, well, why not use an NFED half wave? Because the NFED half wave if you operate on some of the lower bands, will give you multi-band performance. I grant you on 10 meters, um, you're stuck with single band. But if you uh, were to operate or build yourself a 10 meter, uh, sorry, a 20 meter NFED halfway, then you'd have the ability to operate that on 10 meters as well. In other words, the harmonics. And that is one of the advantages of the NFED halfway. And the other advantage, of course, is it's very simple. You've just got a matching box, 49 to one, unun. <clears throat> And you just attach a length of flex, which should be a half wave long on the lowest band. So in terms of physical size, it's the same as same length as uh, the T2LT, but perhaps a little easier to uh, sort of erect and take down and so forth. It's as usual, whatever pleases you. The disadvantage of the Enfield half wave is you've got to have a 49 to 1 unun, and if you don't make it yourself, it's going to cost you know, 30, 40 pounds, maybe even more. So there is a cost. But like all antennas, it's worth trying, and this particular antenna is not going to cost you too much at all. So if you've got an hour or so to spare and you've got a bit of coax and a bit of flex, then give it a whirl. You might be pleasantly surprised. I made mine on 10 meters because I had a particular reason for it, but of course you can scan it up onto the other bands. And you will have to just experiment a bit with the placement of the choke coil. You can move that up or down, particularly if you've got a ferrite core, because it's very easy to just move it up and down a bit uh, to get the best match. But it's an interesting antenna. So that is my take on the T2LT antenna. It's not a call sign. It's an antenna. Thanks for watching this video. Take care. Don't forget to press the subscribe uh, button. There's one, I think, down there or down there, one, one of the uh, sides of the video at the bottom there. And uh, thank you for your support. As usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.